Well, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Guiding Eyes for the Blind. I, I feel like I'm sitting at home, relaxing on my couch, and it feels very comfortable to be up here uh, with you all. The Razors, our newest graduates, first time graduate, our dogs, our trainers, our client experience team, our supporters, and it feels really good to be in this room again together uh, as, as people in person. Uh, welcome to Guiding Eyes for the Blind, if it's your first time here. I'm Thomas Panic. I'm the president and CEO of this wonderful organization. And we're celebrating today, uh, in a lot of ways, the dogs that are here that will change a life. I have Blaze with me by my side, but also just coming together as a community. We're going to hear the beautiful music of Leslie to my right here, who has her cello. And I'll tell you, when uh, I first saw Leslie coming in that first day, and uh, we got her a cello. It was pretty beat up, right, Leslie? It needed a little bit of tuning, so her husband helped her tune it. And I, I was convinced this was the Stradivarius from James Bond, Living Daylights. Do you remember that one where uh, they sled down the mountainside? Because it, was, uh, it certainly needed some love, uh, TLC, which I know you've given it with Omega. And uh, Omega, Leslie, was sharing with me uh, the first couple of times she was playing, licked the cello while she was playing it, and uh, I think she's used to it now. And Alex, our first timer here, as well as Jose and Cindy, Cindy, a local Illinoisan like myself. So congratulations to all of you now, Maryland, but originally all of you for, uh, for all the hard work that you've done since that very first day. And uh, having the courage, the fortitude, we've had a lot of uh, weather changes, it's been warm and it's been incredibly cold and it's been rainy. Uh, but it's really putting in the work to uh, to get your guide dog. And I know it's not your first time for the three of you, but uh, Alex also for putting in the work the first time. I'd also like to thank the people that helped to place these dogs uh, with all of you. And I just wanted to uh, call out both Kat Pualo and Michelle Tang for all the hard work that they've done over the past couple of weeks with you. It's an enormous amount of dedication to come in every day to work with you and to be patient as you learn another dog or your first dog and to make sure that not only are you working together well as a team, but also that they're there to listen and understand what your needs are as graduates. And I know they do an incredible job uh, doing that. Uh, but going backwards, we also in time have the, the individuals that train the dogs. So we have Lori as well as Catherine, as well as Amy DiPaolo, Catherine, and they did an extraordinary job handing these dogs over to the placement specialist to be with you. And I know that you'll benefit from their training as you move forward through your journeys in life with these guide dogs. And then one step further back in the process here at Guiding Eyes to the Blind, we have the puppy raisers in the room who will be recognized today. But uh, for all of you that raise these puppies and receive the puppy uh, in your home and give them the gift of becoming a service dog for someone who's blind or has low vision. It's an extraordinary, extraordinary job that you're doing as a community. So we're deeply grateful to you. And then another step back in the process and looking back to uh, the individuals who are volunteering to move the dogs around up and down the eastern seaboard, whether they're driving or flying to come here to Guiding Eyes for the Blind. Um, I know all of the volunteer drivers and support that the that the puppy raising community has really plays an important role. And even before that, when they're in the whelping center, the in the breeding center, the people that are up there that are on staff that pay attention every day, it's really selfless work that they do. I visited up there yesterday and just to have an opportunity to see how quietly and patiently they work with these puppies as they're being born, as they care for them. And uh, in our uh, nursery of puppies, as I call it, it's just an extraordinary gift that uh, they're giving to the organization. And, uh, you know, that's where it all starts. And uh, even before that, we have the brood and stud fosters who have the dogs in their homes who bring those dogs to the organization and foster them in the community so that they can uh, produce those wonderful, beautiful puppies along with our genetics team, making sure that we continue uh, the legacy of guiding eyes over the years to continue to place really these wonderful dogs into people's lives. So 
And even before that, we have the donors who give the money to allow us to be able to fund all of the operational stuff. Hey, Bubba. Uh, all the, he's got a niche. All the operational stuff that we do um, to be able to, um, to, to, to provide uh, not only the environment, but also to continue to improve our campus, to look forward to a beautiful kennel, to look forward to continuing to improve uh, places like Rosie's Cafe, where our kitchen staff takes care of us, as well as all the other aspirational things that we have in the future that we're looking for. And I did forget one group, the veterinarians, as, as uh, Blaze started to itch a little bit here, thinking about every ear infection, every time they need their medications or any tender loving care, when they're not feeling as well as uh, we hope them to be, to be able to support them. So all of that comes together, all of those people come together along with our client experience team and our admissions people and our regional uh, individuals who I spoke with yesterday all over from the home interview. You remember your home interviews uh, team? You know, going and visiting with you and asking, you know, what, what is it that you want in your guide dog? It's an extraordinary organization. All of you play an incredibly important role in, in it. I'm humbled to be part of it as well. And I just wanted to thank you uh, as we get towards that part of the year where we're grateful to each other for all the things that we do to make the world a better place. Uh, thank you so very, very much, every single one of you for being here and congratulations to the students. I'm next gonna turn it over to Rebecca Cross to uh, celebrate some of her donors. Rebecca? Oh, you're gonna play. Just a sneak peek of what's to come. <laughs> I love that intro, special music. Ooh. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Rebecca Cross, the Director of Donor Relations here at Guiding Eyes. And to echo Thomas' sentiments, we're just so grateful for all of you and whatever part that you play in making these amazing dogs come to be, uh, whether that's as a volunteer, as a staff member, as one of our donors. And congratulations to Leslie and Jose and Alex and Cindy. We're I'm so excited for all of you guys as you start on your new journeys with your guide dogs. Um, so I just wanted to share a, a little bit of special recognition for a few of our donors um, and to just recognize uh, the support that they have given us in order to make these teams and so many more possible. So today I want to mention that Lewis was actually special named. He was special named by Earl Reese in honor of his friend Lewis Browse, who is a fine person and also a great business partner. Lewis was also followed by a Pathfinder Society member, so somebody who has listed guiding guys in their legacy plan was able to follow Lewis's journey as well. Alex and Baloo's training was sponsored in loving memory of Suzanne Hatfield. Suzanne was an avid animal lover and also had, throughout the course of the years, adopted a few released Guiding Eyes dogs. And she loved Guiding Eyes and was a very generous and practical person who loved helping people achieve success and independence and confidence. So we're so grateful that Suzanne's legacy will live on, not only in this team, but for many in year, the years to come. And I also just want to recognize uh, somebody who's here with us today. We have Russell Moeller here today. He's here along with our uh, one of his guests and with our, our planned giving director, Gail. And um, he's here in supporting the memory of his cousin, Trudy. And we wanted to thank you for Trudy's uh, legacy gift. Trudy was a wonderful supporter of Guiding Eyes and really, really uh, thought very strongly of us. And so we know that her legacy will also live on in inspiring these teams and teams to come. So thank you everybody so much again and congratulations to the graduates. And I'm gonna hand it off to Gerald Brennick Meyer. Thank you, Rebecca. I'm gonna stand over here uh, so I can still stay in view. Um, my name is Gerald Brennickmeyer. I'm the Director of Canine Program Development here at Guiding Eyes. Uh, one question I often get asked is, how do the raisers do it? How do they give up a dog? Um, many people then just come out with the statement of, I could never do that. That's, that's impossible. I couldn't do it. Um, and I do my best to try to explain how it is different when you're raising a dog for a purpose and you set that purpose as your goal. 
they often stop listening and get stuck on that idea of it's just too hard. Well, I'm glad our, our raisers made a different choice. They make a choice to understand the end goal and make so many sacrifices to get there. They volunteer so much time, wake up early, make special socialization trips, clean up a lot, <laughs> always need to plan ahead and work through tough times to prepare the growing pups to take on the world. Our raisers choose to make a difference for both the puppy and the graduate. So now I would like to recognize all those raisers with us here today with their certificates for choosing to help and raise a puppy. First off, we have Baloo, who was raised by the Edwards family. We have Goodman, who was raised by Susan and Carmel Fitzgibbon and family. We have Omega, who was raised by Rachel Bell. I would also like to recognize the raisers who could not be here today, but are maybe joining, the, joining via Zoom. If you could please hold your applause until I get to the end, that would be great. We have Lewis, who was raised by the Dorsey family. And it turns out Goodman had three other raisers. <laughs> so it took a village with Goodman. Um, the Trottier family, Liam Bourne, and last but not least, Becky Provençal. I want to just close by saying thank you all again for taking on that challenge of raising a puppy with a purpose, and I hope you're really proud of your accomplishments. Now I'd like to turn it over to Michelle Tang, our placement specialist. Hello, everybody, and um, thank you for joining us for the December 2nd graduating class at Guiding Eyes. Uh, my partner, Kat, and I have had the absolute pleasure of, <laughs> of working with these four lovely teams in front of you. Uh, first, we have Leslie and Omega. Leslie comes from Schaumburg, am I saying that right? Illinois, um, to receive her third guide dog from Guiding Eyes. She is an accomplished cellist and braille music teacher. Leslie bonded very quickly with the Yellow Lab Omega and is looking forward to bringing her home to meet her retired guide, Black Lab female Jerry, her husband Andy, and her son Michael. Next to Leslie, we have Alex and Balu. That's how we like to say his name here. <laughs> Alex comes to Guiding Eyes from Jersey City, although um, more recently he's been in New York City most of his uh, the last couple of years, right, Alex? Um, he's getting his very first dog, Yellow Lab Balu. Baloo is very much a large, snuggly bear, as his name suggests. Jungle Book reference. Alex's kind, generous, and gentle nature has brought out the best in his dog, and the two have already uh, formed a solid bond and a lovely re re excuse me, relationship. Baloo and Alex will return home to be greeted by Alex's girlfriend, Nicole, and their French bulldog named Popcorn. <laughs> Next to Alex is Cindy and Black Lab Goodman. Cindy has come from Gaithersburg, Maryland to receive her second guide from Guiding Eyes. Cindy is a well-traveled woman, having taken her previous guide, Gardenia, to 40 states. Goodman is in for a wild adventure with Cindy, <laughs> as she intends to continue to travel and even will go to space camp next year. I didn't ask for details on that. <laughs> Oh gosh, okay. Goodman has really proven himself to be a good man and is a lovely, dedicated partner for Cindy. Cindy's repertoire of nicknames for Goodman had us all laughing every day, but Kat and I's personal favorite was Puddly Poo. <laughs> Last, but certainly, oh wait, another fun, back, fun fact about Cindy, the sweater she's wearing, we shopped for that on uh, Wednesday in Manhattan at Macy's in New York City. It was quite an adventure. Last but not least is Jose and Lewis. Jose has come all the way from Florida to receive Lewis, his third guide dog from Guiding Eyes. Jose is the VP of Development of the Lighthouse of Broward and, fun fact, a board member of the Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines. 
So Lewis is indeed a very lucky dog to be by Jose's side and will be joining Jose and family on many cruises in the future. Lewis will return home to be greeted by Jose's wife, Carla, and daughter, Andrea. Um, just a sweet little quote that I found earlier today. It says, sit with animals quietly and they will show you their hearts. Sit with them kindly and they will help you fi find yours. That's it. Um, so <laughs> next we have um, Leslie and she's going to play the cello for us. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Leslie Hamlet, and I will be playing a piece called Salute d'Amour. It stands for Love's Greeting, and the piece is by Edward Elgar. Yeah, I'm the cello chick. 
Hey guys, I'm Alex Reese, um, or as everyone here calls me, the newbie. <laughs> Baloo is my first, and this honestly has just been the most amazing experience of my life. I, you know, we've covered a lot of it. I really want to thank the trainers, Michelle and Kat and Stephanie and everyone. Thank all the staff, and even more so these these three people here next to me. This this was also my first time really spending an extended amount of time with other visually impaired people, and they have taught me so much and. I just gonna have a whole new appreciation and approach to life after, after meeting these guys and, and everyone here. So it's, it's been amazing, and thank you all. Hello, everybody. I'm Cindy LeBum from Gaithersburg, Maryland. And I know I'm going to start crying. And I want to say I know the first time I selected the right school to get my first guide dog, this is my second gardenias at home watching on zoom and we have the best trainers michelle and kat will probably never be the same after this week and i <laughs> just want to say to my puppy racers oh god i love you guys so much and all of you i can't say thank you enough to everybody for everything you've done for me over the past 11 years receiving my second now my second dog. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And I promise I'm gonna take the dog to space camp, but I will not take him skydiving, okay? <laughs> that I do by myself. <laughs> Good afternoon, my name is Jose Lopez Maso, and um, I lost my eyesight 21 years ago and 20 years involved with guiding eyes. Third dog, involved in the graduate council and other supporting other projects. And talking about this kind of guiding eyes as a special school, I'm very, very proud and happy. Today are here my first puppy raiser from 20 years ago and they are here tonight. So thank you for coming. A lot of changes, uh, innovation is always great, but the good news is that um, to be successful, foundation need and should be always solid. And I can tell you the foundation guiding us is strong. And as a guide dog user, I'm coming back to the school because I can rely on the dogs and this type of person like Michelle, Kat, Dan and the entire instructors teams. My greeting goes also to the field reps because again, this is our, after admission, this is our second contact person. They are just great. So thank you so much. Thank you for being here and keep supporting Guiding Eyes. Thank you. Okay. We are gonna move into the presentation of the graduate certificates. Um, First, we have Leslie Hamrick and Omega. <laughs> Alex Reese and Baloo. <laughs> Cindy Laban and Goodman. <laughs> and Jose Lopez Masso and Lewis. I'm going to turn it over to Ben now. Thank you, Michelle. My name is Ben Cawley. I'm the director of client experience here at Guiding Eyes for the Blind. Um, <clears throat> most that I would like to say has already been said. This is uh, what I love graduations because coming together as a community of Guiding Eyes is just such a special, special time. And uh, we get to have them talking about innovation now. We get to have them every two weeks, which is phenomenal. Um, Jose, Cindy, Alex, and oh my goodness, <laughs> sorry, uh, Leslie. Um, it, it's been such an honor getting to know you. Thank you so much for uh, your putting your faith in guiding eyes, and we wish you the best of luck. And Alex, I think your classmates can attest that this is not a goodbye. It's just the beginning of a relationship with you, hopefully, uh, for a long time. So enjoy these pups and. Uh, Welcome to the community. For uh, the Razors, thank you very much. And for those of you that are 
going to be joining the uh, graduates for dinner. The puppy raisers are invited. Um, Rosie's Cafe will be um, serving dinner at five o'clock. And um, we wish you safe travels and thanks for coming. Take care.